to the danceable rhythms of Freddie Rich and his orchestra, the sweet and swingy songs of Connie Haynes, and that very familiar roly-poly figure whose sweet, mellow voice whispers... Arthur, the Los Angeles Railroad Station, back home again. Those zestful zanies and screwy stars, Bud Abbott and Lou Costello. Hollywood, last stop, all out for Hollywood. Abbott, Abbott, oh boy, Abbott. Where are you? Here I am, oh. here I am. Oh. Oh. oh, hello, Bud. Welcome, Costello. Mm. Welcome home. Boy, it's good to see you. Uh, how was your train trip? Oh, Abbott, what a trip. What do you mean? I was seasick all the way from Chicago. Seasick? Yeah. Seasick? How, how could you be seasick on a train? Oh, I was sitting between two waves. I... <laughs> Well, everybody's glad to see you back, Costello. Hey, look, look at those five beautiful girls over there waving Ooh. their handkerchiefs at you. Oh, they're waving their handkerchiefs at yeah. me. That's the first clean laundry I've seen in two weeks. <laughs> you thought I lost my place, huh? I beg your pardon, are you, Mr. Costello? That's me. Allow me to officially welcome you back to Hollywood. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Who are you, the mayor? No, just another bum. <laughs> you know, it's nice to be home among your friends. Yes, yes, yes. But, say, tell me, Costello, how, how did you enjoy your visit up to your Uncle uh, Marty's farm? Oh, it was great. Of it. I spent the whole summer taking care of the pigs. Those little pigs loved me like my little brother. Well, I... Yeah, I can understand that. Gee, yeah, but those little pigs were cute. But the big pig was afraid of them. The big pig was afraid of the little pigs? Yeah, the little pigs used to chase the big pig all around the pen. No. And then he, until he fell down. Yes. And then the little pigs would jump on the big pig... And chew all the buttons off his vest. <laughs> hey, I can't warn you. Uh, look, Lo, how, how about the crops? Did you have anything to do with the crops? Oh, I've got crops every night. No, no, no. <laughs> no, 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 no. Uh, I mean, did you help with the uh, planting? Did you uh, sow the seed? Uh, did I what? I said, did you sow the seed? I didn't even know it was rich. No. <laughs> Wait a minute. When I when I say so, I don't mean so s e w. I mean so s o w. So, so what? <laughs> sow the seed. You see, you've sow got the seed. yeah, you, you've got to sow the seed before you reap it. You sow it first and reap it later. Now, what kind of talk is that? I used to reap my seed first, and my mother would sow it later. Look, Costello, when I say reap, I don't mean reap like rip when you rip. I mean reap like you reap when you sow. Oh! That's it. When you say reap like you reap when you rip, you don't mean rip like you rip when you reap. You mean reap like you reap when you sow. So? Now you've got it. Now I've got it. Now you've got it. I don't even know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Look, Costello. Look, I'll, I'll try to explain. I'll try to explain what sow the seed means. Suppose you were planting tomatoes. To what? Tomatoes. <laughs> oh, why do I have to wait till tomato? Why can't I eat them and plant them today? <laughs> all right, all right, all right. So you're planting tomatoes today. Now when they grow up... What do you do with them? I eat them. Oh, no, wait a minute. Oh, you can't eat all of them. Oh, why not? They're my tomatoes. I planted them. I'm, I'm going to eat now, them. Now, wait a minute. Now, wait a minute. You can't They're eat all... They're my tomatoes. You can't eat all those tomatoes alone. Well, I... I don't eat them alone. Oh, that's better. I put salt and pepper on them. <laughs> Look, you dummy. You've got a whole feed of tomatoes. You can't possibly eat them all, so you eat what you can, and what you can't eat, you can. Well, sure. I mean, any... Could I have that again? <laughs> Certainly. Only this time, spread it out. All right, look. Let me get a good look at what you're saying. All right, all right, now look. Make it good, because we got stiff competition. All right, all right, all right, all right, look. Look, look, you've got all those tomatoes. Now you eat what you can, and what you can't eat, 
You can. I can what? What you can. I can what I can't. That's right. Look, I'm willing to forget the whole thing, brother. No, you don't. I'm trying to tell you that you don't eat... Let's go back to soda reap. Now, listen. Wait a minute. No, no we're not going back. We'll stick to the tomatoes. I'm just trying to tell you that you can't eat all the tomatoes. You can only eat what you can, and what you can't eat, you can. You know, there's only one way to settle the whole thing. How is that? We'll throw away all the tomatoes and eat the can. <laughs> Costello, you're impossible. But let's forget about it. Come on, let's... Say, wait a minute, by the way, did you make any money on the farm? Yeah, I'm, I'm, here's my paycheck, $75. Say, that's fine. Just give me the check, and I'll sign your name on the back and deposit the check in my bank. Oh, you can't do that. That's against the law. You can't, you can't sign, sign my name on a check. What? That's fraggery. Nah, <laughs> fraggery. You... You, you yeah, no. Fraggery. No, no, you mean... You go to jail and leech. No, 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 you mean... You mean forgery. Forge. Forge. Oh, forge. Yes. No. Oh, that's what me and my girl made last night. You made forge? <laughs> we did, too. You made forge? We made forge last night. What are you talking about? We made chocolate-covered forge. <laughs> oh, please, talk sense. With walnuts. Look, all right, look. Listen, Lou. I have a perfect right to sign your check. Now, as your partner, remember, I have power of attorney. Well, remind me to have the power shut off. Now, <laughs> give me that check and I'll cash it and take my share. I wouldn't do that if I was you, Abbott. Why not? Because if you take my money, you're going to wind up in a can. And when you're in a can, you can't eat and you can't can. Not even what you can while you're in a can. Because while you're in a can, you're in a fine fix, Abbott. You're help me in the For their welcome home to Abbott and Costello, and for your listening pleasure, Freddie Rich and his orchestra play the nation's favorite tune, I'll Walk Alone. You've got $75 you made on the farm. We're going to find out what people are going to buy when the war is over. Yeah. And we'll invest your money in the thing that everybody wants the most. How can you invest money in necking? Oh! <laughs> Come on, look. We'll make a house-to-house canvas. Canvas? Yes. You mean we're going to make tents for people to live in? Of course not. People don't live in tents. How about the people on Tent Street? No, no. <laughs> Never mind. Hey, we'll start with this big house right here. Now, ring the bell and ask them what they want to buy most when the war is over. But, Abbott, look, there's a sign on the door. What's it say? It says, Swing Shift Welder, Day Sleeper, Do Not Disturb. This means you, police. I wouldn't mind it, but he's got police all underlined. Oh, come, come, come. Pay no attention to the sign. Go ahead and ring the bell. I know, but I... I, I ring the bell. Okay. Well, no answer. <laughs> I, uh... He ain't home. Let's go. Come here. Come here. Come here. Go ahead and ring that bell. Go on. Okay, okay. Oh, wait a minute. Well, I get over here. Well, blubberhead, what do you want? I want to go home to my mama. Uh, good afternoon, sir. We'd like... Afternoon? Do you mean you woke me up in the middle of the day? Can't you read that sign? Why, you fathead, I got a good notion to break every bone in your body. Just a minute. Just a minute, brother. I dare you to strike my little friend. Yeah, you heard him. Yeah. I dare you to strike his little friend. Yeah. I'm his little friend. Go on, strike. 
right knee. What am I saying? <laughs> All right, Lardhead. You asked for it. <laughs> Abbott, I think I'll mark him down as doubtful. Now, oh. <laughs> come on, pick yourself up, you coward. Hey, wait a minute. Look, there's a kindly-looking woman going into the house next door. Go ahead. Now, speak to her. How do you do, madam? Well, stand my girdle and call me any time. It's a man. Where? Oh, you come in, Mr. Costello. You cute little snuggle bug. I've always been one of your greatest admirers. Oh, you don't know what being on the screen can do to the heart of a young girl. But I wasn't on the screen when you were, when you were a young girl. They used magic lanterns. No, no. Man. No, 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 no. Quiet. Magic lanterns. All right, all right. Quiet, please. <laughs> What do you know? All right, quiet, Costello. <laughs> Lady, we'd just like to find out what you are going to do when the war is over. Why wait till the war is over? <laughs> oh, let's dance, cute boy. Look, lady, we just came here to ask you one question. The answer is yes. <laughs> Abbott, let's go back to the welder's house. That's the first time I ever slammed the door in my own face. And listen, Abbott, I ain't knocking on any more doors. No, oh, no, don't be silly. Remember, Costello, we still don't know what to invest your money in. Let, let, let's try one more house. Come on. I, I, run sugar and I always come in handy. Woo, woo, woo. Hey, look, Costello, it's our old friend Kitzel. <laughs> well, well, ah, could be, yes. Well, what can I do for you, my happy champion? My friend Costello here is looking for a good place to invest his money for post-war security. Oh, ooh, now you're talking my language, if that's possible. Uh, for $100, I'll take you in my clothing business as a senior partner. But I've only got $75. Uh, come in, Junior. <laughs> uh, just a minute, Mr. Kitzel. First, we've got to know what kind of clothes you make. Well, now, right here over my arm, I got a coat that I just now finished for Fever McGee. Uh -huh. And you know something? With this suit, I'm giving you free of charge three pairs of suspenders. I don't wear suspenders. Well, how do you keep up your pants? My stomach establishes a beachhead, and the rear guard holds it. <laughs> Oh, come on, Costello. We're wasting time. Just a second. Just a second now, boys. You haven't seen all my stock yet. Why, I got here toothpicks, candlesticks, and all kinds of knock nicks freezers, tweezers, and powder for your beezers, doorknobs, corn cups, and rubber plugs for bathtubs. Not to mention sickles, pickles, flags, tacks, mirrors with cracks, glue, stew, and poo-poo to you. And the dawn comes up like thunder from the landlord. Well, here's lovely Connie Haynes to sing one of the season's most popular tunes, Swing It on a Star. Would you like to swing on a star? Carry moonbeams home in a jar And be better off than you are Or would you rather be a mule? A mule is an animal with long funny ears He kicks up at anything he hears His back is brawny and his brain is weak He's just plain stupid with a stubborn streak And by the way, if you hate to go to school You may grow up to be a mule Or would you like to swing on a star? Carry moonbeams home in a jar And be better off than you are Or would you rather be a pig? A pig is an animal with dirt on his face His shoes are a terrible disgrace He's got no manners when he eats his food He's fat and lazy and extremely rude But if you don't care a feather or a fish You may grow up to be a pig Oh, would you like to swing on a star, carry moonbeams home in a jar, and be better off than you are? Oh, would you rather be a fish? A fish won't do anything but swim in a brook. He can't write his name or read a book. To fool the people is his own best boy. Though he's slippery, he still gets caught. But then if that's all right, it's what you wish. 
You may grow up to be a fish And all the monkeys on in the zoo Every day you meet quite a few So you see, it's all up to you You can be better than you are You can be Freddie Rich and the orchestra played Jerome Kern's lovely hit song, Long Ago and Far Away. Costello, Costello, will you settle down and go to sleep? What's the matter with you? I don't know what I'm... What's the matter with you? Huh? What's oh, matter? Oh, I can't sleep, Abbott. I'm worried about how to invest my money. Oh, that's ridiculous. Just look at you. You're, you're letting us get on your nerves. Your eyes are all bloodshot. Oh, they are? Yeah. Give me the mirror. Hey, what do you mean, Abbott? My eyes ain't all bloodshot. They're not? No, only the whites. <laughs> Listen to me, Costello. There's only one way to settle this. Tomorrow morning, we're going down to the bank and invest your $75 in war bonds. I got enough war bonds now. Uh-uh, you can't have enough bonds, Costello. Bonds mean security for you and your family. Just think, you put $75 in a bond now, and in 10 years, it's worth 100 Yeah, but I think you got some. Sure. I'm going to go right down and buy bonds with the dough. That's a way to talk. And now you can go back to sleep with tranquility. Go back to sleep with tranquility? Yes. What's the matter? Do you want to sleep with me anymore? No, no, no. Oh, boy, oh, boy. Oh. I'll buy those bars. I'll have a lot of money in 1954. And now, ladies and gentlemen, we take you into the future. The time is ten years hence, the year 1954. The scene is the futuristic, prefabricated, air-conditioned home of Lou Costello. The mother speaks. Scooby, darling, uh, tune in on the television set. Your father and your Uncle Bud are on the air tonight. Ah, oh, gee! Do I have to listen to them dopes again? Oh, that's no way to talk about your Uncle Bud. Now, go ahead and turn on the program. Well, good evening, folks. This is Ken Niles, bringing you the 197,000th broadcast of the current 1954 series, featuring those two old jolly men, Bud Abbott and Lou Costello. Why, why, look at look at you, Costello. Where where have you been? Talk sense. Do you realize I'm I'm trying to organize a, a baseball team? Ain't you got that team together yet? Yep, yep, yep. I finally got them together. Boy, Jiminy. Yeah, but the players nowadays. The players nowadays surely have funny names. For for instance, who's on first? Who is? Yes. Yes, what? 
<laughs> no, what's on second? Oh, Snoopy, why did you turn off the program? Ah, uh, every week, the same thing. <laughs> they haven't changed their jokes in ten years. <laughs> Gee, Mom, it's six o'clock. <laughs> Mom, it's six o'clock. The planes are coming in from town. Uh, there goes Mr. Sherman, the banker. <laughs> <laughs> That's Mr. Hackett, the butcher. <laughs> That's my pop. Oh, Don't get your boat, kitten. Swim. Come on. Here comes somebody down the street in the land. Where's Lou? Oh, he's working late at the office. His work has been uh, piling up on him. But I thought he just hired that new red-headed stenographer. Yeah, that's why his work is piling up. Ha, ha, ha! Ha, ha! What about having the Ha, ha! Will you be quiet? Oh, Uncle Bud, I hope you're staying for dinner. Yes, I think I'd better. After all, it, take, it takes me ten minutes to fly from Hollywood to Denver. Ten minutes? That's why you get Uncle Bud for buying that used rocket ship for months. <laughs> what are we having for dinner tonight, Mommy? Porterhouse steak, boiled in creamery butter. Holy mackerel! <laughs> Again? Can <laughs> we never get nothing to eat but steak and butter and butter and steak? It's driving me crazy. <laughs> Wait, why can't we have some of those new beans with zippers? <laughs> Good evening. Is this the futuristic prefabricated air-conditioned residence of Mr. and Mrs. Costello? Yeah. I am Mr. Blank from the bank. Thanks. Back in 1944, Mr. Abbott and Mr. Costello purchased a number of war bonds. Those bonds have matured now, and I'm here to pay you off in cash. Oh, isn't that wonderful, Uncle Bud? It sure is. Yeah, Uncle Bud. Now you can get that mink to pay you always wanted. <laughs> now, if you'll just sign the bonds on the back, I'll give you your money. There's my signature. There you are. There's mine. And I'll also sign for Costello. That's froggery. <laughs> so my old man says. <laughs> and now, as you remember, the little boy here is the beneficiary on these bonds, so we'll have to have his signature. Oh, of course. Cupid, darling. Ah, uh, cut out the mush. I won't sign. What? I'm not going to you... sign. You won't sign. Yeah. How dare you say such a thing? The way you've been acting lately, I don't know what's gotten into you. What's the matter with you? Oh, I'm a bad boy. <laughs> oh, you just wait till your father gets here. Oh, Uncle Bud, uh, snap on the Picascope screen and who's at the back door. Well, all I can see is the garbage can. That's my pop. <laughs> hello, 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 dear. Hello, Heather. Hello, dear. What an exciting day I had at the stock market. Yeah. Seven up is up to seven and three quarters. <laughs> well, I you... near got up with that myself that time, didn't I? Yes. <laughs> yes just in time, is. Costello. This man here is here to pay us the money on those war bonds that I talked you into buying ten years ago. And your son, Chupi, refuses to sign the bond. Oh, yeah? Yeah! Oh, yeah? Yeah! Oh, yeah? Yeah! What a stubborn kid. I might as well talk to myself. <laughs> Lou, Lou, why don't you take Cupid into the bedroom and give him a sound thrashing? Oh, I can't do that. I can't whip my son. Why not? I'm playing both parts. <laughs> And in one part, it might hurt. <laughs> Here, use my revolver. You know the old saying, spare the rod and spoil the child. <laughs> well, you people can yap all night, but I ain't going to sign no bonds until I know what my cut is. Oh, Cupid, your daddy wants the money for you. He wants you to have a career and a fine education. I don't care what... <clears throat> Excuse me. I, I, don't, I don't want no education. <laughs> I don't know what part. Look, look, Cupid. If you'll sign the bonds, 
We'll give you all the money. Well, I wasn't gonna. But you talked me into it. Well, folks, you've made a wise decision in turning the money over to the boy. Because you know, if anything should happen to the little fellow, all the money goes to the survivors. Get it? <laughs> well, good night, folks. Good night, you little... <laughs> Well, Lou, you heard what the man said. If anything happens to Cupie, <laughs> all the money goes to the survivors. Uh, do you get it? Yeah, I get it. And I get it. And I think I'm going to get it, too. <laughs> Sings the blues. Tess's torch song. Here is a story about a gal. Folks call the torch a tip. Because she trusted, her heart got busted. Love made her life a mess. I had a man. was a good man That is, you see what I mean Is I thought he was a good man I had a friend And she was a good friend I told my friend about my man Cause I thought she was a good friend Life was sweet Baby, didn't I have my man Welcome to me And the fireworks began Ain't got no friend. I'll bet you can guess just exactly what happened. That was the end, the end of my friend, the end of my man, and almost the end of me. Abbott and Costello for a final word. Thanks, Ken. <laughs> good night, folks. Good night, folks. And I want to say good night to little Eunice in the hospital in Pittsburgh. Get well quickly, honey. Get well for Abbott and I.
This is the Armed Forces Radio Service.